Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Young with Hearing Solution Centers, and today we're gonna to talk about a really interesting statement. This has been asked several times, so I'm putting it out there because you asked this. So why do some people have hearing loss and some others don't? Coming right up. So let's just open this topic up. Why do some people have hearing loss? Why do others? Let me give you a couple examples over, you know, doing this for 32 years, having 25,000 patients that I've helped with, with hearing in different ways. So I had a patient that came in, she lived all of her life as a nun. She's been in very cloistered, you know, away from all kinds of other noises, but that wasn't just the only thing. She's lived on the land. So they grew their own stuff, very nice water wells, I check her out. You know, I've seen a lot of 90 year olds, most of them. And I mean, 90% of the 90 year olds that I've ever seen have hearing loss and, and except her. You go, why? Well, she's lived a really kind of quiet life with that too. There are people, and, and we'll, we'll see this quite a bit. I remember there was a railroad that was going out of business. This is back in, in uh, Tulsa. It was back around 95. And so a whole railroad was going out of business and there was a, they had a hearing aid benefit. So here's what we were getting, it was just crazy. And I mean, we were just blowing and going with all these patients coming in the door. So we'd have, I'm 55, I, that would have the 55 year old dad that would come in and the son also works for the railroad, good job. And he's maybe 25, let's just give an example. So the dad would come in and have a significant amount of hearing loss. He would have his hearing loss, and, and at first, you know, he would notice a difference between when he went to work and when he came home. We'll explain that in just a second. Whereas the son hears this massive difference. So I want you to think about it like this. It's called temporary threshold shift. So the son at 25 years old, only working there for a few years, he goes into work, his hearing's perfect, and then his hearing dips, and then bounces right back up and he's back to basically normal hearing. So we have a temporary threshold shift and that recovers. Now, with the dad that was 55, he's had declining hearing because of the amount of noise damage that both of them have gone through. Now, the dad would already having this and so his hearing's already down pretty far, he'd have a minor temporary threshold shift, but he wouldn't see much of a change because when the comparison between the two, he's got 35 years, let's say, in that facility versus five years in the facility, just make up a number. So the difference between the two of them is based upon how much longer that he's been the dad than the son. So he's had a permanent threshold shift versus a temporary threshold shift. If we do it long enough, it will turn into a permanent threshold shift. Now, let me give you another one. We would have those same kind of people that would come into the door and you'd see people that will be affected by the same exact thing. They could be line workers working side by side and one guy is gonna have a much more significant hearing loss than the next guy. And you say, well, how can that happen? Well, you might want to check in, and that's what that's what audiologists and physicians actually do. So physicians and audiologists actually ask a lot more information, more than the hearing aid dispensers that you see. So that, that audiologist is saying, do you have any medication that you're taking that could be affecting your hearing? Could you have been sick with something, a stroke, whatever extra diagnoses that might be in there. Sometimes we find patients that they actually need to take a baggie of all of their drugs into their physician because that's what the problem was. So two line workers have pretty close hearing, but one is much worse and we find that that could be a fact. We have had people who have taken, um, had, had injuries by different kind of cases. I'll give you an example. Um, I've fallen off bikes. I grew up riding motorcycles. When you said bike, that doesn't mean anything to me because I never had a bicycle. You had, we all lived on dirt roads. 
And so I've gone off the side of, of you know, 20 foot you know areas with my motorcycle i i would would you know jump them do all kinds of crazy things man i went over the top of those things many times but i just had a patient that came in just yesterday i think it was and he comes in and he had a bicycle accident didn't have a helmet on i never wore helmets either went over top of it but the way that he hit on this right side damaged, he had a concussion over here that broke the, the, the bone. So he's had a compound fracture and that also damaged his hearing to the place where they've done all kinds of reconstruction and it still doesn't fix it. And his inner ear was completely damaged. You say, how come Scott's gone through being bucked off of horses, which not very many, but a few, and been um, knocked off of a bike a motorcycle going a lot faster than he was without a helmet, and I don't have the same damage. Well, maybe you say, well, I know you have brain damage. Okay. Other than that, how come my, my new patient that just came in yesterday is talking to me about the same issue? And Dan is saying, has had a massive injury because of that one issue. Well, it was maybe related to how he fell. It might have been he has lesser bone density than I do, bonehead that I am maybe. There could be a lot of other issues that come along with that. And so that's why you see audiologists because we're not just looking at the testing of your hearing. You see, hearing aid dealers like the places at Costco and other ones um, that, that are just trying to always, always sell you hearing aids, we're looking deeper. We're trying to say, hey, listen, we can dispense the technology, but we've got to find out why and what's happening. Because many times when we see a patient that comes in the door, we're saying, I'm sending you right over to an ear physician because we need to get this dealt with correctly and quickly. And, and we'll have the ability to get you into that place to take care of it. So to answer the basic question that we've just done, why do some people have hearing loss and others don't? It's a variety of factors. And that's what you have to dig into. So don't talk to me about your, your sister who had the same problems and, and had the same sicknesses that she's grown up as you did because I don't care if you're twins, it can, things can affect you differently based upon the medication and how your body reacts to that or the injury and how your body reacts to that. Okay. So as you see that, we want to go deeper into that situation. So if you're interested in that, give me comments. I promise you, I can't always diagnose this over from if you live in, you know, Iran or wherever that might be. I have people that all over the world ask me questions and we want to answer them best we can. But remember, I can't always diagnose and I don't want to fully diagnose on that. We'll give you some comments and some ideas about it. So thank you so much for listening.